Before we get started, let's familiarize ourselves with some of the dairy cattle terminology that will be used in this video, and also take a look at the dairy anatomy diagram that's provided. Feel free to pause this video or rewind and refer back to these diagrams as you go along with the video. Have you ever gone to a state fair or livestock show and wondered why people show dairy cows? Have you been curious to learn how the judges place those cows the way he or she does? What do judges look for in these animals? Why did the herdsmen walk these animals slowly around in a circle like that? Well, today we're going to learn all about dairy judging to answer all of those questions. But before we learn the tips and tricks of dairy judging, let's learn about why we judge dairy cattle in the first place and why farmers work so hard to prep their animals for huge week-long shows like these. Dairy cows have been selectively bred over the years to be high milk producing animals that can continue milking that high production level for many years. Farmers breed their animals to have calves that grow into strong, healthy, and well-tempered cows that can handle producing large quantities of milk over the course of many years. This is achieved by selectively breeding animals to pass down ideal genetic traits to their offspring, as well as implementing a proper nutritional feeding program to ensure that they have a healthy diet full of nutrients and vitamins that they need to produce a lot of milk. As we learn about the history of dairy judging, it's important to differentiate between the two different uses of different types of cattle. Dairy and beef cows are the same species. However, they look and behave so differently because of how they're selectively bred over the years. Dairy cows have been bred to be very lean and have refined bone structure or strong dairy strength. This is why they may seem more bony than beef cows. Their nutrition and maintenance is also designed to increase their milk production and longevity. Beef cows, however, have been bred to be more muscular and thicker animals whose diets promote muscle growth over a short time period in order to produce high quality meat products. The best way to understand how we judge dairy cattle is by going through the Dairy Unified Scorecard, which is a summation of all the traits every judge analyzes in a dairy animal. We will also break down each portion so that you can learn what each of these terms mean and how to implement that into your dairy judging abilities. The first section of the scorecard is frame, which accounts for 15% of the 100 points a dairy cow is judged out of. A dairy cow's frame is referring to the skeletal parts of the animal, not including the rear feet and legs. Now we're going to go into the breakdown of those 15 points. Five points is allocated to rump. Ideally, you want a long and wide rump at a slight downward angle from the hips to the pins to allow proper drainage of birthing fluids after calving. Wide pins allow the tail head to sit slightly above and neatly fit between the pin bones. Five points are for the front end. Ideally, you want a wide and deep chest floor, wide set legs that are straight and squarely placed, and smooth blending from the neck to the shoulder blades that are tight to the chest wall. Two points are for the back or loin. Ideally, you want a strong and straight back and a level top line. Two points for stature. You want a tall cow with long leg bones that are still proportionate to the rest of the body. Stature can also vary depending on the breed and age. And then one point for breed characteristics. Overall, you want a balanced cow with style, femininity, and a clean cut head, and following along with other characteristics specific to that animal's breed. In this video, we'll review breed characteristics for the Holstein breed and also the Ayrshire breed. The next section is dairy strength, which accounts for 25 points of the scorecard. Dairy strength is a combination of dairiness and strength, which supports sustained production and longevity. Ideally, you want a cow that's open and angular and feminine with corresponding strength, width of chest, spring of rib, and substance of bone that remains refined. This is where body condition score, or BCS, comes into play. BCS is a visual and tactile evaluation of body fat reserves using a five-point scale with a quarter-point increment depending on the stage of lactation the animal is in. A score of one denotes a very thin or frail cow with low milk production and poor overall health, while five denotes an excessively fat cow with poor dieting, joint stress, and could lead to potential heart and breathing problems. Anywhere between a 2.5 and a 3.5 is ideal body condition for a dairy animal. It also depends on their lactation stage, but this type of body condition score ensures the best health for the animal and most efficient conversion ratio of feed to milk production, which is also most profitable for the farmer. Now, as we break down the 25 points dedicated to dairy strength, the first allocation is eight points for ribs. 
Ideally, you want ribs that are wide apart and an animal with a wide spring of rib or a large barrel. You want six points dedicated to the chest. You want a deep and wide chest floor. This shows capacity for vital organs. Four points are for barrel. You want a long, deep, and wide-bodied cow because this allows the capacity for the digestive and reproductive system to work efficiently. This also allows a larger body to carry a larger calf, so this animal will most likely have less issues fitting a large calf within her as she carries it for the gestation period. Two points are for thighs, ideally lean. Two points for neck, you want a long, lean neck that blends smoothly into the shoulders. Two points for withers, you want these to be sharp with chine prominent. One point for skin, you want thin, loose, and pliable skin. This shows that the animal is hydrated properly. The next section of the scorecard is rear feet and legs that accounts for 20% of the total points. The rear feet and legs indicate the cow's mobility or its ability to be mobile and walk around well. The legs support the body and seeing as though these are big animals, it's important to have strong legs that are structurally sound to support them over the many years of their life, especially when they're pregnant and are carrying a heavy calf. Five points go to movement. This really refers to the use of the animal's feet including the length and the direction of step. When walking naturally, the animal's stride should be long and fluid with the rear feet nearly replacing the front feet. A good gait shows a cow who is balanced and can walk on all terrain safely. Three points go to the rear legs as viewed from the side. Looking at the rear legs of a cow from the side, you want a slight set or curve to her legs. You don't want a cow to have legs that are too straight because the legs have a tendency to get behind them and can also shift the rump angle. Two points for hocks, you want adequate flexibility and also freedom of swelling. One point for bone, you want flat and clean refined bones. And then one point for pasterns. For pasterns, you want them to be strong and short with flexibility. A way to observe the strength of the pasterns is to watch as the cow walks be on the lookout to see how low her dew claws, or the two small bone appendages on the back of her rear feet, get to the ground. The higher off the ground they are, the stronger the pasterns are. The last section of the scorecard, and the most important, is udder, which accounts for 40% of the scorecard. The udder is the most important part of the cow, hence the highest percentage. These traits contribute to a high milk yield and a long productive life. The more capacious and well-attached an udder that a cow has, the longer it's going to last and the more milk it's going to produce over time. 10 points are dedicated to udder depth. Ideally, you want a deep and large and capacious udder. However, you also want it to be held high above the hock, indicating how youthful it is. Ideally, you want the udder floor to be two inches above the hock. However, depending on the age of the animal, that can be varied. Nine points are for the rear udder attachment. Ideally, you want a high and wide rear udder attachment that firmly and seamlessly attaches to the body wall. Five points are for teat placement. You want the teats to be centrally located under each quarter. If they're too close together or too far apart, it can make it difficult to milk the animal. Five points are for udder cleft. You want a strong suspensory ligament indicating the clear halving of the udder. The cleft is also the main ligament that's pulling the teats in so that they're centrally located. If the teats are usually on the outside of the udder or are not centrally located, it's most likely because the cow has a weak cleft. Five points are for four udder. You want a firmly attached and smoothly blended four udder that blends into the body wall. Three points are for teats. You want cylinder shaped teats that are uniform size and medium length so that the teat cups on a milking machine can easily attach to them. And finally, three points go to udder balance and texture. Ideally, you want a level udder floor that has a lot of veining to show high blood flow to the mammary tissue. You also want equal sized quarters. And that concludes the Dairy Unified Scorecard. This may seem confusing and a little overwhelming, but don't be afraid to rewatch certain parts of this video and re-familiarize yourself with the anatomy of the dairy animal with the diagram in the beginning. It's gonna take a lot of practice to perfect your ability to judge animals, but a good rule of thumb is to always go off of the scorecard and the percentages allocated to each section, making udder the most important part of the dairy cow. Now that we've covered the Dairy Unified Scorecard, and we've also gone over a lot of common dairy judging terminology, let's try some practice classes in the next section of this video. 
thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two of Dairy Judging Oral Reasons, where we'll practice some judging classes as well as learn how to format oral reasons so next time you're dairy judging or judging any livestock, you'll be able to effectively judge the class and confidently give a set of oral reasons. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out part two.